Welcome to Loop TV. I'm your host, Gene Munster, along with Andrew Murphy. Our topic today is Apple Fitness Plus, which just launched. And we're going to jump right in and start to find a place so you can compare this to what else is on the marketplace. The obvious comparable is what's going on at Peloton. As a quick refresher is Peloton has about 1.85 million paying subscribers of the end of the last quarter. 510,000 of those are the $13 per month version that does not require a bike. And so that is probably the best comparable. Andrew, when you compare the two, we've both worked out now with both Peloton apps and Apple Fitness Plus. How do you compare them? Yeah, I really enjoyed my Apple Fitness Plus experience. I think the primary comparison is how these apps are capturing data. So with Peloton, a Peloton Digital, they can use an Apple Watch or the phone itself to capture data. It's pretty minimal. With a full Peloton bike experience, though, the data is much more robust and therefore the workout is much more intense. On Apple Fitness Plus, using the watch to capture- so Let me interrupt you there, Andrew. You say more robust data. This would be like your output levels and cadence, all that stuff. Yeah, and also friends that are spinning along with you oh, gotcha. and pushing you to work harder and- um, Leaderboard. Yeah, the leaderboard, exactly. Then on the watch and Apple Fitness Plus, I found it to be a less intense because I couldn't compare my data versus the instructor or others that I'm working out with. So I wasn't pushing myself quite as much because of the way they're capturing data. Got it. And they do require Apple Watch version three or newer to use Apple Fitness Plus. And I'm curious, you know, that kind of forces that integration there, uh, forces the heart rate data at a minimum. How did you like that aspect of it? Well, I was frustrated because I also had to update my Apple Watch and there wasn't enough room to do the operating system on the watch itself. So I had to erase my watch and update the software. And it was kind of a hassle to upgrade all my devices to a point where I could actually use Apple Fitness Plus. But once I had it all set, the integration between the watch and the television was pretty cool. For the first time, I realized I was getting biometric feedback on my television, which is a fun experience. How about you? Cool. My sense was a richer catalog of categories. That's one thing that really jumped out at me. But Apple Fitness Plus, when it compared to Peloton, is really a true Apple's being true to their brand. And I think of the analogy probably is something like Spotify or even Beats Music versus Apple Music is Spotify tailors more towards someone who's a little bit more critical about their music. And I think Apple Music tailors to everybody. And I think that's the same feeling that I had after using Apple Fitness Plus. I'll give you some examples is Peloton has, uh, when their in instructors tend to be, I would say more provocative, some of the language that they use, you could say like they're more uh, like tattoos and uh, the music can be a little bit more intense and maybe explicitive. And uh, when you look at the instructors and the feeling overall, the vibe overall is more of a great workout, but it's not probably for the person who is super intense about their workouts. That was my sense. A much bigger opportunity for Apple Fitness Plus, but I did feel like this clear line between the two. I'm curious, did you sense that? Yeah, definitely. I think we're both picking up on something where Apple wants to be a little bit more Family friendly, family family friendly, and Peloton is okay pushing the envelope a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I think when you put those together, those experiences together, I think what you're going to come out with is Apple Fitness Plus probably has a bigger addressable total market versus where Peloton's at. And maybe let's shift gears over to the size of the business right now. They're giving away for a month free. I think if you get a new Apple Watch. Again, it does require a newer watch version 3.0 or better, and you'll have a few months free if you do that. But this is typically $10 per month. And I'm curious, Andrew, when you think about how many subscribers they could ultimately drive up in the next several years for Apple Fitness Plus, what's your best estimate? If we think of Apple Music at 85 million subscribers and news at maybe 5 million users, uh, I think Apple Fitness Plus sits somewhere in the middle there, probably north of 10 million subscribers in five years seems to be a decent attach rate versus the 
85 million Apple Watch users that are out there today. So I think that north of 10 million would be a great bogey for them. Although if I think about my own usage, I will probably become an Apple One subscriber, which means I'll have Fitness Plus and whether I use it or not, I'll be counted in that subscriber base. Got it, good point. Andrew and I did not compare notes before talking about this estimate. My estimate is 15 million in the next three years, one five, and have similar kind of big picture around uh, Apple Music as some sort of a benchmark, Peloton as a benchmark and kind of get to that 15 million number. Assuming that's a hundred dollars a year, there's different payment options, but they probably average out to about a hundred dollars per year. If you assume that, that's a $1.5 billion business. And it's a small piece of the now approaching 300 billion in annual revenue. It is in the plus category. It is additive, additive to services. But the other story here, of course, is that this is going to promote the time-tested halo effect. It started with the iPod and the Mac. And another great example, they have the watch. The watch users who want to get Apple Fitness Plus, people who want to try out Apple Fitness Plus, want to buy watches. Let's say they sell another 10 million Apple watches over the next several years because of Apple Fitness Plus at $300 a piece, that adds 3 billion. So you could find a way to think about the halo effect plus the subscription effect to get to four and a half billion dollars per year. And next thing you know, we're talking about it ends up being a little bit more measurable, two, 3% of total revenue. And so another great example of low line fruit for Apple. And I, I think this is uh, something for everybody and is true to who they are kind of enriching people's lives. I believe that that is what they want to do. And I think fitness is an area that they can play a role in that. So Gene, final thought. Peloton, a question for you. If Apple Fitness Plus does what you say it's going to do, do you expect Peloton to grow to a similar level or will Apple eat into it? I don't think Peloton is going to reach where Apple Fitness Plus is. I think this is more of a, a niche product. I think if you look at their kind of the premium $40 a month at 1.3, maybe over time that grows to four or 5 million. And the other, the 510 number maybe grows to a few million as well. 5 million potentially over time. I think collectively it still will lag where Apple Fitness Plus is at that 15 million number. And so at the end of the day, after using both of these, I don't really think they are competitive. Maybe a good point to end on. I'm going to give you the final word here. Yeah, I think I may have both to that point. I was actually using a Peloton bike for the cycling class that I was doing on Apple Fitness Plus with my Apple TV. And I found it to be great. And if I am an Apple One subscriber, then I'll probably be a subscriber to both Peloton and Apple Fitness Plus long into the future. Love it. Smart move. Good for your long-term wellness. On that note, on behalf of Andrew and Gene and Loop TV, bye for now.